Okay, so here we are with Jason and we're at Muckleford. We haven't been here for ages, have we? No, we haven't been here for ages. Oh, I have, not not well, both that's of us. Right. Well, you've been, <laughs> you've been just sitting around all over the world, uh, going to, uh, what is it, the US, the Flight Fest and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I have. Um, yeah, I haven't even had a chance to put a video up since I've got back, so... Yeah. So does this mean I'm going to beat you to it? Uh, it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we'll just show them what we're going to be flying today. Yep. So here we are with Jason's Zeta FX61. Yep. And yep. Jason's over here. And we've got some antennas up there. I'm not sure what the deal is there. Yeah, I've got the antenna tracker. So So we're going to do a track flight, are we? Yeah, we are going to do a track flight. Okay. Or how far out are we going to be going? Oh, I think we'll do maybe 3K out. And then okay. we'll, do a big, um, we'll do a big lap. You know, way way out. You know, right around us, and and let the tracker track it. So, okay, let's yeah. make this happen. Done. <laughs> So here we are with Jason and his antennas are up and uh, looks like all systems go. All systems go, yeah. Um, yeah, we're just heading out uh, south of our position. Um, we're almost a kilometre out. So a light gusty wind. Um, so we won't be going super low, but um, we're 11 metres above um, our uh, ground position. So that gives you some idea. It's very flat out here. But what we'll do is we'll head out a couple of kilometres and then what we're going to do is a, a bit of a cross country circuit doing um, a full lap sort of right around us. So yeah, that's the plan. So Okay, so we've got two antennas up there. Yep. And one's doing a spinny thing and one is looks as though it's pretty stationary. Yep. Can you explain exactly what's going on? Okay, the antenna on the right hand side is um, panning um, from right to left and then left to right and what it's doing is it's looking for the best um, signal um, via the RSSI pin um, and it then crunches some numbers once it's completed uh, that, that sweep um, and passes that information through a controller um, to the other uh, receiver and points that um, antenna towards the aircraft. And I've got video of that, which is quite interesting. It's um, interesting seeing the two antennas work. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it is a little unusual to look at. I, I find it like a metronome. Um, well, I'll tell you what's really unusual is um, I'm not actually watching the video feed at all, so I've got no idea where you are. Sorry, I normally wouldn't have any idea where you are, but I can actually tell where you are by the uh, helical pointing in that direction. Yeah, it's good. It actually gives you a, a little bit of a guide um, as to where the aircraft is. Um, Fortunately, I, I know this area pretty well, so I, I've got an idea. But if you're flying somewhere different, um, it's not uh, it's not too difficult to sort of just pop the goggles off and you know go, oh, okay, well that's that's where we are relative to to our position, and uh, let's let, let's sort of point in that direction. So, what altitude are you at at the moment? Uh, I am at 16 meters. Oh, so you're pretty low. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I've got a question for you. Now, this is a question we're going to obviously get on our YouTube channel. Now, um, I've done a video, as you know, uh, demonstrating a track flight, a manually track flight. Yep. Using a helical antenna. And I know you've done that extensively. And I actually learned that from you. Yep. So, the question I suppose we're obviously going to get is, why... Sorry, I was waiting for that car to go past. Why would you actually bother with the hassles of tracking as in um developing this etc when the other system is actually foolproof i mean it works quite well doesn't it it does it does look there's uh, you know there's a time and place for manually tracking but um i was just finding as i was um flying closer and closer to the ground um and at distance it was it was just getting more difficult to take my hands off the the sticks and um and then uh, manually adjust the the antenna whereas um, you know I developed this to uh, I suppose take care of all that for me. So obviously I suppose where it comes into it is altitude would be a determining factor. 
So if you're flying like I'm flying, say, at around the 50 meter mark, 100 meter mark, thereabouts, you're up pretty high, everything's happening pretty slow. Yep. There's not a drama. You can take your hand off the sticks easily, adjust your antenna, no dramas whatsoever. Yep. Whereas when you're down low like this, you're, I can see actually looking at your hand, you're actually working at it. Yeah, oh look, I'm, I'm you know, making fine adjustments all the time and, and that's, you, the lower you get, um, the, the more you're gonna be actually doing that. Um, uh, yeah, so that, that's where the, the tracker comes in handy. But then look, you may just sort of go, oh look, I, I just don't want the hassle of, um, of, of manually tracking. I, I don't fly necessarily particularly low, so. Um, I, I just like the idea of a tracker and that that's cool too, you know, it's uh, horses for courses really. Well this is working really well, so it's obviously not working with, uh, not like the conventional trackers which are relying on your GPS, are they at all? No, no. Um, I, I like the idea of this. Well look, it's a, it's a little different. Um, it was a stepping stone for me, um, you know, in terms of development, so I thought look, I'll, I'll give an RSSI based tracker a, a go. It's, it's taken me a few months to to perfect it. I've, I've lost count of the amount of hours I've spent on it, but um, yeah, it works quite effectively. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it's simple. Um, it's using um, many th items that I imagine people have just got sort of sitting in their FPV box, like um, the RC305 receivers, um, which are a good receiver. Um, just gives you a chance to repurpose them. Um, yeah, it, it works really well. So you're obviously right to our position at the moment? That's right, yeah. I'm, I'm sort of... You're working your way around, aren't you? Yeah, I'm working my way around. So I'm about 2.3 kilometres away, um, about 50 metres up. I've just switched the um, aircraft to cruise. I'm running APM. So yeah, that, that is its position out there. Yeah. So yeah, we'll slowly sort of make our way, you know, around. And it gives me a chance to sort of walk away from the, the receiving station. Do you want to have a go flying, Paul? No, it's all right. I'm actually um, busy at the moment. I'm okay. attending to some young lady here. <laughs> this is J Jason's other special woman in his life. <laughs> yep, she's my co-pilot. She wasn't too happy about my um, multi-rotor, was she? No, she, I've got a little one and she really cracks it with that. Whereas, um, yeah, I, I think she was a bit blown away with how big your one was. <laughs> she's like, oh God, you know, I'm really going to have to bark at that. The irony was she actually went straight up to it before it even started it. Yeah, she was checking it out. Oh, she knows the shape. She's not silly. <laughs> so what altitude are we at at the moment? Uh, we're at 37 metres. Um, we're heading north, but we are um, two kilometres away, and we're, we're just going to make our way around our position. This certainly does take the hassle away from um, tracking, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. You've had, you, all you've had to do really is just focus on the flight, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's, um, it, it's, I find it sort of relaxing in a way and just hearing, it's sort of reassuring hearing that, that servo motor just run back and forth like a wiper. Um, and I know that when it pauses, it's, it's just, um, I suppose, making some calculations as to, okay, well, where are we going to draw the video signal from? And and then uh, off it goes again and, and, and starts looking again, a bit like a radar, I suppose. Well, she seems to be working quite well at the moment. A lot of traffic on this road today, isn't there? Yeah, it's a bit unusual, you know. Um, lucky to see sort of one or two people an hour out here. So it's worth noting that uh, this system is actually available from your website? That's correct, yeah. I've, I've got it listed on my website. It's a kit. Um, I'll have a link in the description for that, so just look down in the description. Um, yeah. Can you uh, tell us exactly, so if someone buys this kit, exactly what comes with it? What are they, they going to receive? Um, well, they'll get all the brackets to hold the servos. They'll get the wiring. Um, and most importantly, they'll get the controller. Um, so all they really need to add is um, some GWS servos and I've specified what exact ones to get. Um, that gives you the full 360 degree movement. 
Um, you'll also need a couple of um, receivers. Um, I'm running the Boscam RC305s, but there is a, another model out there that's 32 channel, um, 5.8, and, and it will function with that as well. Um, yeah, the servos, the receivers, um, that's, that's pretty much it except the antennas, you know, um, just a couple of helical antennas. Probably suggest a four or six turn um, helical um, works really well and uh, doesn't have to be, you know, a, a huge amount of turns. In fact, I think you can go too far the other way. So, um, yeah, and that, that's all you need. And then it's probably take you an, a, an hour or two to put together and um, off you go. Helps to have light stands as well. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay, yes, yes. Um, getting um, your antennas up high on 5.8 is pretty important. So um, It actually is very important. My um, FPV case has actually got an antenna connector built into it okay. and a DVR, which yep. seems like an excellent idea. But because it's only sitting about a foot or so off the ground, yep. humongous amount of multipathing. Yep. It's really quite horrendous, actually. Well, I remember that time we went out to Altona and we were flying and, and just even a foot difference in um, height um, of the receiving antenna um, just made a huge amount of difference. Well, that was what, five or six k's out and it was difference between clear image and um, static here, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was, um, it was really marked. So, um, yeah, ever since then, I, I've just sort of invested in the, um, the light stands, which are pretty inexpensive through eBay. and. They're yeah, easy to transport, easy to get your antenna up high, and um, yeah, off you go. So you probably can see now we're, we're almost um, gone right behind ourselves. So I'll just orientate myself around. Um, the antenna on the uh, remote control transmitter is, um, is um, 180 degree beam width. So um, yeah, hence the I'm turning, <laughs> I'm turning around. It's not an omnidirectional one, but that's only one thing I have to worry about rather than two. <laughs> well, I think just turning around to face the aircraft isn't such a big deal, is it really? No, no, it's not. Um, look, I think it's actually um, good, uh, a good habit to get into. Um, it, it makes you actually think, well, where is it? Um, and the, the tracker itself um, is going to guide you uh, with that as well. So we've gone almost right behind ourselves now. Um, this is um, an interesting thing to watch um, in that, um, yes, the servos are 360 degrees, but once, once it's gone behind itself, it's going to have to then compensate and come around again. So you'll probably see uh, a fair bit of movement off um, one of them in a tick. It'll 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 spin right around and pick the uh, the aircraft up again. Probably in the next minute, I'd say. I hope I've explained that well. Yeah, you have. I'm just waiting for the. I'm not sure how well you're going to see it on the GoPro. Oh, there you go. It's turned. It's going to have to do it. Still has to. Still has to do the turn the other way. I think. It's pointing north at the moment. So you'll see the receiving antenna do a, a full sort of. Um, almost like a 360 turn in a tick. I'm trying to figure out whether it's already done the turn or not. I may have missed it. Has it? Uh, I think it'll be close to. You usually can hear the motor running as it comes around. Is that your aircraft we're hearing? Yep, so we're, we're now out this way, about half a kilometre. I can see your aircraft. Going to have to do that turn soon. Yeah. There it goes. Yep. So Hopefully I got that. Up. Yeah. So it's picked it up again. 
So there you go, success. Yeah. So you can pretty much fly anywhere you want, um, you know, and it'll just it'll just follow it. So um, it, 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 look, I know I made it, but I I I don't know. I don't like things not working. So <laughs> I, yeah, my wife will attest to um, me fiddling and fiddling and fiddling until I've got it working to a a pretty reasonable point. Um, and I don't want an aircraft to go down um, because. I've lost video, um, you know, you, I like some redundancy there, yeah, sure, with the autopilot, but I'd rather just not lose video. Um, and it's always a little bit more fun bringing the aircraft back yourself, isn't it? It, it is, <laughs> particularly if you can see it. <laughs> rather than blindly relying on uh, RTH and stuff. <laughs> but anyway, well, thanks very much for taking the time to run us through that, Jace. That's fine. That's no. really much appreciated. I think that'll clarify questions that people may have. I will have a link in the description for all the gear and where you can get it from. Yep. And uh, thanks very much for taking the time to watch, guys. Much appreciated. Take care, everyone. <laughs>